Okay, on a day when the Dow is down nearly 700 points at its lowest, what could actually work in this hideous environment? You might want to circle back to companies like International Flavors and Fragrances as we keep heading lower. IFF invents proprietary scents and tastes for all sorts of consumer packaged goods, everything from personal care products to household cleaning products, food and beverages. I'm sure you've smelled their stuff and you've tasted it. It's like an arms dealer for the soft goods industry. Now, last May, IFF CEO Andreas Fibbett came on this show. He made a bold prediction. His company had just announced a major $7.1 billion acquisition of Fruiterum, and the market hated it. But Fibic told us that Wall Street would come around. And sure enough, that's exactly what has happened before this epic market meltdown. So could IFF be worth picking into this weakness? Let's check back with Andreas. He's the chairman CEO of IFF to get a better sense of where the company's headed. Andreas, welcome back to Mad Money. Good to see you. Good to see you. Yep, you did say, look, we're going to have to do an equity offering, which is amazing. Most people say, oh, well, I don't want to talk about it. And that it would mark a great level. And if the stock came down, and you also said that it would probably end up being priced above could there be so much demand, which is exactly what, it, what happened. And then it went up. So it's obvious to me that Wall Street has really warmed up to this deal well before it actually closed. Yeah. No, a absolutely. And we have closed on record time. We said in May six to nine months we were ahead of time. We are very happy about it because it gives us a head start to integrate the business. I think the cross-selling. You've got to explain that to people because, to me, it's marvelous. It really is such a natural. Yeah. What is fantastic is that right now we have the largest and broadest customer base in our industry, and we have more than 30,000 customers. No one else has it. And we are starting to take their natural solutions, like natural colors right. or like their uh, antioxidants, to sell them into our customer base and taking our technology, which we have shown to some of their managers already, to sell into their customer base. We actually believe that's the greatest value driver for us going forward. Well, you're one of the few people I know who recognizes that perhaps the old consumer packaged goods customers, they're good customers. Not saying that. Yeah, sure. But they don't have the growth that these newer, littler companies, small, medium size, that can be the next big ones. Yeah. And that that fruit of rum has just a huge amount of those. This would be natural for your regular business and for fruit of rum. Seventy percent of their customers are basically small, local and regional customers. The That's hot area. Helpful. It's very helpful. And when you have that kind of company, I mean, what I believe is that it's you have taught me that tastes are regional. So if you have a regional food company, then you've got a natural audience. Maybe they can even take those tastes to another place, but that's what you need to be in besides just the gigantic companies we all know. It's super helpful for us and, and for our business. And you have seen probably in the last couple of quarters, and in particular, the local and regional customers had a very good performance yes. for us. Now, uh, I was concerned raw material costs hitting you, too. Can they possibly stabilize at some point? We all seem to think that they can just do nothing but go straight up. Yeah. What we have seen, unfortunately, in our industry, that uh, even next year we expect some raw material increases. You do? Even? Yeah, because, you don't think it peaks? Uh, it depends. You have uh, areas like vanilla, where we actually believe it might even go down a little okay. bit, but other areas are going up. And in our supply chain, so some of our suppliers, out of India and China, they had some issues as well, and we have to manage it. China's but the, okay. They're not. China's okay. The good news is that at least we can deliver all the products to our customers. Right. Some of our competitors can't. Okay, can you tell me how you can manufacture a natural color? <laughs> it, it, it all depends on your raw material and on okay. your ingredient, and that's how you do it. And if you select the right ones, then it becomes a real good natural color. Next time when you're in one of our facilities, I really will show you how we can do it. Well, I wanted to ask you, you have 110 facilities. Do, uh, candidly, do you need all of them now that you've made this merger? Yeah. We actually, we look at growth at our, uh, at the merger. Okay. We look how we can grow our, our top line. Certainly, we will look what can we do with all of our facilities, but it's all about profitable growth. It's not just about cost cutting. Okay. There was another thing that confused me about Fruit Run. What does it mean to be in the meat business? Do meat, yeah. Isn't meat just a cow? No. Look, what they have, for example, they have a lot of interesting seasonings. Oh, you mean like for, beef jerky or something? For beef, yeah, absolutely. And we have now even a little bit of a B2C brand in Europe. I did actually the day one celebration out of Salzburg. It's a big hub in, in Austria. And that's, uh, that's where this brand, Wieberg, is, uh, is, is located. Oh, it's like white first and bratwurst? Yeah, we have some of these things where we can make them really nice and the taste is unbelievable. Okay, uh, anti-aging and, and anti-wrinkle? Yeah, that's more for the, uh, for the cosmetic for me, for piece. Me. Oh, I thought, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. sir. 
I and mean, that's a good business. It's a very good business. It's actually one of our fastest growing businesses. And you remember three years ago, we uh, bought a, a French Canadian company, Lucas, Lucas Myers. Yeah, that was very smart. And it's, it's growing every single quarter, double digit, and we're very happy with the business. You referenced in your uh, conference call last a Fifth Avenue store. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not asking you to name yeah. it, but, you say, but just talk to us, tell people about what you see going on there so people understand really what the, some of the nitty-gritty of what you do. If, if you look at, at, at fragrances, for example, that's what you might see in, in, in a Fifth Avenue, is much more focused towards the more premium fragrances, okay. the artisan fragrances, and that's something where we try to focus now our attention as well, and all more naturals, natural rose essence, for example, and we have great facilities to manufacture exactly that. All right, one of the we talk about market volatility. One yeah. of the stocks I bought after the crash in 1987 was IFF. Mm -hmm. And I bought it because you had mid to high single digit growth. And I couldn't find any company if we were going into recession that would be able to do that. Here we are again, yeah. right? We got market volatility. You're still able to do that kind of growth, and it really isn't dependent on all the economy. No, we, we, we believe we can we can do it. Five to seven, that's our, our mid to long term long term guidance. And uh, we are very bullish that this, this can be done. Well, it's certainly reasonable because your more than 100-year history would indicate that it can yeah. be done. <laughs> Thank you so much to Andreas Pippik. He's the chairman and CEO of IFF, International Players Affairs, a company that I started buying for clients when I was at Goldman in 1984. Mad Money's back after the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.